Hello guys, in this video I'm going to teach you how to fold the Utisanius Beetle designed by Swapnik Jugger Laputik. Sorry buddy if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. Well, surname actually. Um, okay, anyways, the beetle looks like this. As you can see it's pretty cool. Um, it's unique because it has the spikes and I really like it. It's um, kind of complex. Well, it's not like a regular box plated model. It's a bit tricky to fold, but I think if you're experienced enough, you'll be able to do it. Uh, I tried making tutorial for for this beetle uh, once, and uh, here is the result. Um, show how to fold the base but uh, I was kinda confused about this part and then later I figured it out but anyways as you can see the paper is um, really dark so you wouldn't be able to see the creases nicely okay so anyways let's start folding it oh and before we start I want to say that this is going to be a little special tutorial because I'm not just going to teach you how to fold it I'm going to um, do like a crease pattern study so I'll show you exactly I don't know what you need to know before you start folding the crease pattern um, that looks like this and yeah so we're going to do the crease pattern study first um, okay so as you can see the crease pattern looks like this it might look a bit tricky or complex I don't know how experienced you are but it's not that bad now, uh, as you can see, it's different on two sides. Um, that's because on this side you see the actual crease pattern, and on the left side you see uh, packings. Because this is box plated model, um, you have to pack boxes in order to design it. Anyway, this is not designing tutorial, so I'm not going to explain this stuff. So, looks like this, and yeah. So first of all, before uh, we need to identify the type of this crease pattern, and as you can see here, are the boxes and pretty much all the creases are 45 degrees. That means that it's box splitted. And if the crease pattern is box splitted, that means it's based on the grid. And uh, yeah, so first of all, we need to figure out what grid we have. Um, so here you can just you know start counting so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 so from here to here it's 18 uh, and that's one half so the whole grid is um, 36 by 36 so now the question is how to get that grid um, so this is how it's done. You divide 36 in half, you get 18, and then you divide it in half again, and then you get 9, and well you can divide 9 in half, but we need like a whole number, and uh, that's 9. So for, we need to divide the paper first in um, 9 equal parts. I think I'm going to make the tutorial once to show you how you can divide the paper in any uh, division, like really show you like the method to do. But anyways, um, first now I'm just going to show you how it's done, not explain why is it like that. So I'm going to use 35 by 35 of um, this paper. I'm not sh exactly sure what kind of paper is it, but it's thin and uh, it's white on both sides, but. I'll try to tell you like when do we have to use the white side and when do we have to use the colored side. Yes, it's some kind of tracing paper. Um, so if the grid is 36, it's uh, nice if you have the paper that's 36 by 36 or bigger than that. But I'm using 35 now, so it shouldn't be the problem. It'll like the one little unit will be uh, just a little bit smaller than one centimeter, so it shouldn't be the problem. Um, Okay, so we're going to first do the 9x9 grid on the colored side, so I'm going to say that this is my colored side. 
So maybe I'll just see here. I don't know. You just try to see, so I'll know. Um, so go on the color side like this, and then fold the paper in half. Like this, and fold, and then fold paper um, to the crease we've just made, but don't fold all the way, but just pinch on the left side here, like this. We'll probably have this crease later, but just don't make the whole crease now so we don't get confused. So that's one fourth, and now fold this edge to the crease we've made again. And again, pinch. So this is um, one eighth. Okay. Now you're going to um, f uh, fold the paper diagonally in half, but make sure it's in this direction. Did you see this? Where is perfect? Um, yeah. Kinda. Okay, but try not to crease all the way, but just crease this part here because we don't need a whole crease. Okay, and then fold. And now you're going to make the line that goes from this point here. So, this is the way I do it I just pinch this part and then slide the paper until it hits the bottom right corner. Okay, so now, so, as you can see, it's about this much, so then I need to move this farther up. No, no. What about this? Maybe. Okay, so it seems that this paper kind of extends when you, have, when you make this small creases. So, um, hopefully it's okay. Uh, well, you know guys, um, because, you know, when you, if you have a weak paper like I do, you see this will kind of extend and it won't be accurate. So, you can just take a ruler and, uh, and, uh, find the crease. So, it's from... From this point to about this much. Okay. So let me just check that. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. Okay, it's here. And then I'll just uh, you know, draw the crease there. Okay, you can do it that way as well. Okay, now just use the point and fold the paper up like this. And we are going to make exactly one ninth. Like this. Okay, now rotate the paper. And fold this edge to you know opposite edge like this okay and then fold this edge to here make sure you don't fold to here but to here Okay, then this edge to just check. So this is the half so to here. Okay, this edge to here. Well, you can see where I'm going. So you basically just divide each section in half. So we got one ninth there, so if this crease is folded, that means this 
section will, will need to divide it in eight equal parts and I'm pretty sure you all know how to divide in eight equal parts since that's just fold in half, fold in half and fold in half again okay like this and uh, this one too you can see this is like a unit let's do here so you need to pull there so I guess it's this crease over here no it's not it's this one yeah that's exactly so pull this one to the second crease one two so the second crease just like that okay now unfold this part and fold the edge to here so that's one two one two three four five units from the top like this Kiss now if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We successfully divided in nine equal parts. Now I just do it in the other in the other way to get a grid. So exactly the same thing. You're going to use this point as a reference again. Okay. Like this. And now, fold this up like that. Just a sec. Okay. Like that. And now, we divide this whole part in eight equal parts. So here, just fold in half. Do it on the other side. Okay, and this one to here and then this one to here okay so as you can see we have 9 by 9 grid and we just move up so now we need 18 and then we'll get 36 so 9 times 2 equals 18 so we need, that means we need to divide each of this unit sections whatever into half so just fold this edge to this line and then just keep doing that till you have 18 by 18 grid it's pretty simple so like that Okay, now in this direction.
Okay, so we have eight. We divided the paper in eight unique parts in this direction. Now we did this one. And here one more crease. Okay, so now we have 18 by 18 grid. So as you can see, we are on color side now. Now we're going to turn on the white side, like this. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to make the mountain fall along this crease and then fold it to this crease. Like that, now fold this edge um, to here. Okay, now make the amount of fold and then again do the same thing. Okay, now we can do this like as much as you can. Um, you should stop doing that when the paper gets thick. I mean, this way of greasing when you hold all of them, because that's not really accurate way. But if the paper is thin enough, it's not a problem. For Eugene, while well, the tissue paper I used for the Eugene, that one was really thin, and uh, well. You see when you make the splits like this, you can see how thick is the paper, and uh, this one is not really thick, but for example, Croft or Eugene, like the middle would be about this thick, so it's about one centimeter, and, uh, and the Eugene tissue paper, uh, It's just uh, about this thick. It's a, it's a really thin. Oh yeah, and yeah. Not sure if I've showed you, but here the scales are finished. And yeah. Okay, so just keep doing that. Now it it got really thick, so now I'm just going to unfold this and then just uh, continue doing that. I'm going to do this a little bit faster now.
Okay, two more increases. Now, here the last one I just uh, rotate and then just fold it up. Okay, now do it in this direction. So exactly the same thing. Uh, again, I'm going to do this a bit faster now because pretty much there's nothing I need to explain. It's pretty straightforward. And there we go. We have 36 by 36 grid. So the next step is pre creasing all the necessary lines. And yeah. Okay, so now we have to pre crease all the, the diagonal lines that are crease pattern. Uh, let me show you just what I mean by diagonal lines. We made those vertical and uh, horizontal lines now, so now we have to make those 45 degrees uh, lines uh, in order to be able to fold the base. Uh, okay, so we're going to find the reference for each of those lines. Now, it's box pattern model, so that's pretty simple because um, I just uh, because they all lie on the grid. So it's not really hard to find where it is. So as you can see, this one's six. So it's pretty easy because uh, you can count from here: one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can see that that's this uh, lies on sixth unit. So I count just six units from here, and then just 45 degrees line, degree line from that point. And you do the same for all the lines. As you can see, you have this thing here, and it's 45 degree line here, and all that. It's pretty simple. So, um, so we need to count six from the symmetry line, as you can see. Uh, 
So just, I'm just going to fold the paper in half now just to find where that symmetry line is. Okay. And I'm going to mark those points. So as you can see, I have two dots here and they represent the symmetry line. So we need to count, uh, from this point we need to count six units. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's here. So we're just going to mark this part a little bit, like that. And then we know we need to make a 45 degree line going this way. So I'm going to draw it first and then uh, fold it. Now make sure you're, uh, I forgot to tell you, make sure to do that on the color side. As you can see, this first crease is multifold. So that means it's a colored side. So make sure uh, I'm going to draw the lines on the colored side because um, it will be easier to show you how to collapse the base later because you'll see all the creases. So here's the line. So now I know it's the same on the both sides. So now I can just you know uh, repeat it, the same thing on the both on the other side. like this okay so now as you can see here we have two more creases like that that they're one unit so I'm going to just zoom in and uh, here's the first crease and here is the second crease let's do the same thing here I think it's easier if we do in the same time on both sides like uh, when we do it and this one do it and the other one it's better than doing whole crisp pattern here and then repeating it on the other side. Just find it easier in that way. Okay, so we have something like this. And now, um, here we have 45 degree line like this. So you just make it from, you know, this point. So let's do it. Okay, something like this, and let's do it on this side. Okay, like that. So now here we also have domes, so we can do them right away. So like this and like this. Okay. So here on the other side as well. Okay, so Now we have a line from that point that goes six units as well and then goes down like this. So, so from this point count six units up like this. So this is two. I was counting pair of two. So two, four, and then six. Okay, and then we have the same thing here. We just go six units down as well. just like this. Okay, now let's repeat this on this side. So two, four, six. And in this direction. Okay, we have something like that. Now, from that point, we go three units down, then one down, then two units down as well. Well, I call you go three right, one left, and uh, two right. So it's like this. 
So from this point, go to three units, to the right, one, two, three, and then go one, and then go two. Okay, now here we can already continue this because um, this point goes here. So I'm just going to make that. And now we can do this line. So it goes from this point to here. Now, this kind of structure or whatever this thing is called, Pythagorean stretch. Uh, it allows the designer to pack more boxes into uh, smaller, like, smaller space. Um, so the way it's done is this one goes to here, then we have the line up there. there. So this is how the packing would look like. It's like this, and then. Um, I guess we use this line, so this one goes down, like that. Okay, this is more a designing thing, but it might be interested to know. So this goes like that, and then it goes this way. And now, I think here it's two units, let me just check, um, I mean the space in between. And, yeah, it's two units, so whatever. Now, if we drew like a real boxes, then it would look like um, like this, like that, and then this one would go here. And if you look closely, those two overlap. But um, okay, never mind. I guess I'll do one designing video and show you, tell you about this stuff. So then we have. From that point, we have this diagonal line, and we're in weird angle, and let's do it. Now, this one doesn't really have a reference, so you just kind of make the line like this. So, because of that, I'm just going to take the ruler and do it because this Pythagorean stretch doesn't uh, lie on the grid. In many cases, it does. Okay, so like that, and then we also have from this point to down here. Okay, so we have something like that. Okay, so let's repeat those lines here. with my tripod. Okay, so zoom in. So now we have three lines down. Okay, and then we have... Um, <laughs> let me just check. So two lines down, then one on the one unit on the right, like this. And then two, if I remember correctly like this and then uh, one up and then we have Pythagorean stretch this will lead me, you have the diagonal line from this point to here so let's draw it okay and then also from the same point Maybe I could use the ruler for all the creases. Well, anyways, it doesn't matter. So now we have these things on the both sides. Okay, so the next step is to do all of this stuff. So if you look here, um, if you go three units to the left, you're going to get the reference point for this, and then from that point, you just have the line going here uh, 
Yeah, simple as that. So let's do it. So you see this point going she and it's to the left and it's here and we have the reference for that line and now we just make the line from that point uh, and here is the trick you just make the mountain fold here like that and now draw that line so it just goes 45 degrees somewhere and then count now how many units so like that Okay, and now it goes like this, and then we use this point to find the other references. So draw a line like that, and then as you can see, we have something like this. Now from that point we go two to six units on the up, and then we're going to do the stuff. So, from this point, uh, we go 6 units to the top, so 2, 4, 6, okay, so we end here, and now we go 1 down to the left, like this, then 1 down to the right, and then one down to the left and then two down on the right and then again one down to the left again on the right so let me just then just repeat that okay like this okay I guess that's it, it looks like this now from this point just make the line like this and then you can connect these two lines together so you have something like like this okay so just repeat that on the other side so let's see it so as I said count three units from this point so, we count the three units, and now I'll fold this one like that, and then just uh, make the 45 degree line from here. This. Okay, now like this. And then two more lines here. Okay, now from this point we go six units to the right. Two, four, six. And now that fun part. Uh, one unit to the right, one unit to the left. One unit to the right. Let me just see if that's correct. Yeah, okay, then two units on the left. And then just one on the right, one on the left, one on the right, one on the left. Like this. And now here, one on the right up, actually. And then just connect those two lines. Just like this. Looks kind of cool. I like it. Um, so, what's the next step? Um, hmm. I guess. Um, if you look here, the crease pattern. We have. We need this point, and how are we going to get it easily? We are going to count units from here to here. We have one, two, three, four, four units. Okay, and then we just go up and we're going to find the reference for this. And then we go five units down. Okay. 
So, from this point we count four units. Here are the four units. Okay, then we go up. So this is our reference, and then we make the line from that, but we don't go all the way to the symmetry line. We do this. Okay, and then we just go up like this. Well, now instead of going here for units and all that, we can just mirror image this part. So, you know, just do this and then make the straight line. I mean, 45 degree line. Okay, so something like this, and now another rear crease is going to go from this point to to here. So I'm just going to use a ruler for this. Okay. Um, yeah, not perfect as well. So here. I know it's that point because if I go from here, I'll, I, I know that it hits the edge. Okay, so to here. Okay, it's good enough line. Okay, so now we almost have all the creases. Mm. Now we are going to... I want to make those things because I'm kind of worried about them now because they don't lie perfectly on the grid so I think I'm just going to you know draw the real lines like this so let me show you how, how is that done so just look here and you can see the first um, you see this grid line and goes down like this and it hits this diagonal line but it doesn't hit it um, I don't know, if I zoom in, you can see that um, this is where it hits it, but I don't know how to explain, let me see, sorry, the, come on, just a sec, okay, so if we go with this um, grid line like down like this, and with this one, they'll intersect here and not here, so just make sure, so we go from this point and then to this point here as you can see they don't here you see here is the intersection between grid lines so it's this one so we're just going to draw the line the one to here like that and then here is another intersection here Okay, so that's all. Yeah. So just do the same thing here. So we are looking at this point here. Again, not this one, but this one. And then just connect it with the upper one. Okay, so there we, there we go. So now we have everything except those squares here. Now you don't really need to pre-crease them, but I'm going to pre-crease them anyways because it's going to be easier to show you how, how are they done. So I'm going to start here from the top. And yeah. So find where is this point and then count four units from there and then you're going to make the square so if that point is here oh, let me just check, yep, and then count four units from here so one, two, three, there's four okay, and then we have the square thing some people like to call it diamonds Okay, now count two units, 
So it's here, and then do the same thing. I think they are called level level shifters or something like this. I'm going to explain this stuff later. So now it, here's the symmetry line, by the way. Okay, so now from that point you count, I mean from those count T and is down. So it's here, and then do the same thing. So we have uh, those diamonds here, and we have them. Here, okay, now we have another diamond here, and then another diamond here. This might look weird because it's not symmetrical, but it's going to all make sense later. So, something like this, okay, and then we have two more here okay so here here's the bottom so from this point you need to go one unit diagonally on the top like this I'm just going to mark that and now from this point you make diamonds two actually okay And close enough, and the, do the same thing on the other side. So now we can use this as a reference. You see, we know it's here, so we just need to mirror that. So here's the symmetry line. So here's the one unit. Go here, one unit, and then show the diamonds. This, and then we have another one here. Okay, and now we just go down to units and repeat them. Like this, and now here we have two more. and two more here okay so those are all the lines needed to fold this crease pattern a lot of them. Uh, okay, so the next step is just to actually fold them. So I'm going to start here with this line. I'm going to make the valley fold here. So just fold this like that. You know it's 45 degrees, so it's pretty easy to fold it. Okay. That and now we can start. So turn around the paper and you're going to fold them like this. You're just going to kind of open this and you'll see that uh, you have this line. So you can just uh, fold it like this. Okay. And then we have another one here. And things like that. This is how you're going to make the multiples. Now, there is also another way to do this. So I'll show you on this one. And this way it's a bit easier, but it's not as precise as the previous one. It's like this. You need to just kind of pinch the paper like that. And then make the creases.
Now this way is not as accurate. Well, it's pretty accurate, but I don't know. It's not as good as the previous way, but it's faster and easier. So that's the reason why I'm going to uh, use it. So just make the mount of holes like this everywhere. Now here's the thing, I know the disc crease is going to be valuable, so I'm just going to um, fold this up to here to create that crease. Uh, now don't fold those level shifters yet, like don't pre-crease them as the others because most of them are going to be valuable, so that's the reason why we're going to do them at the end. Okay, so that, and what's it here? So just like pinch all those creases. It's pretty easy to do. So I'm just going to zoom out because camera is probably going out of focus now. Okay. So that we need this one now. This one. Now, well, you can do those this way as well. There's the e a bit easier way to do them, but well, you can actually do them later. So you can leave those. So I'm just going to leave those. Okay, then let's move here. Okay, like this. Okay, um, now this side. So, as you can see, this method is, it works pretty well. You can break all those pieces really fast. Okay, I'm going to make those. Sorry, I've just realized that I haven't didn't drink water for quite a while. Okay, like this and let me see. 
Yep. So, what else? This. And uh, I'm going to actually. Let me just do this here. No, I'm going to actually fold these creases. I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to turn around and fold them. Normal. And when you fold them, don't unfold because there's something we have to do. So you have that, and now the diamonds are left. Uh, I'm not going to do them like a really accurate way. I'm just going to make mountain fold here, and let me just show you basically how it's done. You can see this crease just by the middle of it. Fold it like that, and then just fold this triangle up like this. It's not really. Uh, so just do that because it goes pretty fast and. Uh, Okay. And it's just easy to do. Okay, this one. So we've already done all of them. Now let's move to um, those. So completely the same thing. This one. And here are all the lines needed to fold the base of this model. Quite a lot of them actually. Uh, it didn't take that much to do them either. <laughs> 